Hey everyone, I'm Meteor Mike. And I'm Weather Jeff. Welcome to the Liberty Science Center in Jersey City, New Jersey. From kids to adults, almost 750,000 visitors flock to this Discovery Center every year to learn and have fun while doing so. The nonprofit attraction has dozens of exhibits and programs that are hands-on all about science and weather. Let's go check them out. Our first stop, science on a sphere. This six foot suspended globe can show us projections from both NASA and NOAA, and it can also show us historical weather data. And it's the perfect place for some weather squad fact or fiction. All right, so this episode is all about hurricanes. So Mike, first one, fact or fiction. Hurricanes have been increasing not only in frequency, but in intensity due to climate change. Fact. Climatologists at Climate Central have done research to show that climate change leads to a warmer planet. And when you have a warmer planet, you're also making waters warmer as well. And warm waters is like the fuel for hurricanes. The warmer the waters, the more efficient the engine that is the hurricane. And so therefore, since 1980, we're seeing an increased frequency of rapidly intensifying hurricanes. Got one for you, Jeff. Fact or fiction. Thunderstorms and tornadoes cannot happen in hurricanes because they're two separate things. That is fiction, Mike, and the reason being, okay, yes, you have the center of the storm, that's where all the worst weather is happening, but you have rain bands that extend hundreds of miles from the eye or from the center, and within those rain bands, you can have thunderstorms. This is a rotating storm, and when you get that rotation, you have, uh, if you have thunderstorms, the rotation added from the storm can lead to spin up tornadoes. All right, Mike, one final one. Fact or fiction, it is safe to assume that a Category 1 hurricane won't be as bad as a Category 2 or higher. <laughs> fiction. Fiction for sure. Um, you know, even though you get a very strong wind in a Category 5 hurricane that's completely different from a Category 1, there are other impacts related to hurricanes. So let's just say that Category 5 hurricane doesn't make landfall. You could still have the storm surge. But that storm surge could be the equivalent of a storm surge of a Category 1. So it really depends on the intensity, the track of the storm. For example, Hurricane Sandy made landfall with 80 mile per hour winds, but the most devastating part was the storm surge because of where it made landfall, not necessarily because of the winds. The most important takeaway, folks, is that it's not so much the scale, but the impacts. All right, now that we've talked about storms, let's see one in action. This is so cool, folks. The Liberty Science Center has a hurricane simulator with winds that could go up to 100 miles per hour. And joining us for this stormy simulation, someone you may have seen before, one of our News 12 Moodcasters, John from New Jersey. John, how are you? Great, Jeff. And you? And John, thanks for joining us once again for another Weather Squad adventure. So, you live in New Jersey, you experienced Hurricane Sandy. What was that like for you? Well, fortunately for me, I live in the northern hills and uh, it wasn't as bad as it was for people at the coast. When Sandy made landfall in New Jersey, the wind speeds were 80 miles per hour. Are you ready to experience something similar here? Yes. All right. A Cat 1 hurricane. Let's do it. All right, guys, here we go. I can't Constant imagine. Constant wind of 100 miles an hour. I can't imagine what that experience would be like right here in the New York Tri-State area, just having a wind that steady, that sustained for a prolonged period of time, just absolutely incredible. All right, now 
that was just the wind. Imagine having a driving rain alongside that. We're about to see what that's like. Here we go. Whoa, I lost my goggles. <laughs> now that we just experienced a tropical storm in category one and two hurricane, it's time to pull out the News 12 exclusive Moodcast Mood Meter to find out how we're feeling about this weather. And Jeff? I mean, this, this is an easy one for me. I don't know about you, John, but. Yeah, I'm whew, the same way, John. It was just intense. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, so you like this. Oh, maybe you could be our first Weather Squad Hurricane Hunter. Not bad. And don't forget, you can watch Moodcast every weekday morning exclusively on News 12. Now, storms like the ones we just saw also have an impact on wildlife. Right, and to find out more about that, we're going to check out Liberty Science Center's animal exhibit. Yeah, this place is by no means a zoo, but they do have over 110 different animal species. So we're going on the job today as animal ambassadors to see how the Science Center takes care of these animals in their natural habitat. Yeah, we're also going to see how they act in that wild weather. Joining us today is animal care expert Fred from the Liberty Science Center. How's it going today? I'm doing great. So happy to be here with you guys today. And so what is, what is that? Oh, we have uh, one of our six-legged friends here, one of our Madagascar hissing cockroaches. So don't you just want to cuddle up with them? No. <laughs> Yeah, she's not much of a cuddler. But, yeah. Uh, she is a really an amazing animal, has all kinds of incredible adaptations. I mean, you've heard these stories that they can withstand anything. So how would they uh, stack up against weather? I'd assume pretty well. Where they come from in Madagascar, uh, they also experience large storms. The, one of the amazing adaptations of the cockroach is their ability to breed incredibly rapidly and multiply in large numbers. So even if some of these were to be caught in a flood, they can very quickly reoccupy an area. Good for them, not so good if they're in your house. Is this an adult, this is how big they get? They can actually get a little bit bigger than this. She's getting close to her max size, but you get a little bit bigger. This makes me feel unsettled. <laughs> All right, Fred, what do we got next here? So we have an Eastern King Snake, which is a species of snake you'd find right here in New Jersey. Wow. So, so we can be like just walking down the street and see one of these guys. Well, maybe, maybe not. Are they in any marshes? Are they in any wet environments? Or are they mainly just in like the forest? They would certainly uh, could be found in areas where it's maybe a little swampier. Mm -hmm. um, but they tend to stick a little bit more towards dry ground. So they don't like floods by any means? No, this, uh, this would not be an animal that would uh, handle a flood uh, very well. So when the rain starts falling, and they, can they sense that, okay, this is going to be a bad rainstorm, maybe we should seek higher ground or anything? Yeah, so they, they would certainly have some sense that the weather is turning and they'd seek shelter. Um, of course, most times when there's a rainstorm coming in, but if they were, if you were ever to get a very large flood, like you might get from a hurricane, they would not fare well in deep water. All right, so who do we have here? So we have an eastern box turtle, uh, another residence of the state of New Jersey. For a turtle, it's moving. Fastest turtle I've ever seen, man. Yeah. You keep having to pick them up, pull them back. She can really move around because she hmm. is not a turtle that would swim, so they are well adapted for walking around on land. Uh, so they don't go in the water at all. Being in deep water would be fatal to this turtle. Oh, wow. What kind of weather would adversely affect them? Would they have to kind of prepare for then? Certainly any large flooding storms would be very damaging to right. them and their habitat. Um, they actually also, not only storms, but don't necessarily fare well in very hot temperatures. It's Shelter. not air conditioned in there, you no, mean? Totally. Ah. So since this is not an aquatic turtle, they don't live near the waters at all. They actually live inland. So they can live in drier areas up in the forest and in fields, but they do also like being near streams and hmm. ponds because they still need to drink water. And a lot of their favorite foods hang out near the ends of, uh, edges of streams and ponds. Sounds a little like you, Mike, like being near the water, not in the water. Pretty much. <laughs> All right, Fred, thanks so much for taking Thank the time you. us to teach us about these animals today. All right, now it's time for some fun. Yeah, we all know that flying debris during hurricanes can be very dangerous. You'll hear forecasters like Mike and I telling you to board up your windows if you have any loose patio furniture or objects outside to either tie them down or take them inside altogether. So today, the News 12 Weather Squad, Jeff and myself, 
We're going to be acting like hurricanes, and we're going to build these structures and see who can knock it down fastest in today's viewer challenge. Look, I failed already. I failed already. I feel like uh, I'm glad I'm not an architect. I think I'm going to fall faster than Jeff. Let's see. I'm going to fall before I even shoot the ball, Mike. All right, go for the bomb bird. Oh! Oh, no, I did it! Winner! <laughs> You got it. I did it. First try. I'm just going to go red guy. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that goes to say, in any hurricane or any storm, depends on where the debris hits your building, right? Right, right. Go a little higher this time. Hey! Oh. All right. All right, Good job, all right, Mike. All right. Congratulations. All right, Mike. That was a lot of angry fun, but seriously, a lesson that's not just for the birds. Right. In any windstorm, doesn't matter if it's a hurricane, a tornado, or even a thunderstorm, you got to watch out for flying debris. Absolutely. And folks, we want to ask you, do you think your neighborhood is hurricane-proof or prepared? Let us know in a comment below. Yeah, and we will highlight those comments on the very next episode of the News 12 Weather Squad. And be sure to head over to News12WeatherSquad.com to check out all of our adventures. See you later, everyone.